Hey everybody, how great to see you this morning. Running a few minutes late. Let's see if we can get me set up. Perfect. So, hi, I'm glad you're here. I'm Rita Hickman. I'm owner of Inspire Massage in uh, Northern Illinois, and I help women navigate life through great There we go. <laughs> through great body mind tools and ways of navigating the stresses of life. Not through playing a head game, but instead by understanding how we really work, how women really function, our bodies and our body minds and our subconscious, and learning how to navigate all the stuff that uh, they should have taught, me, taught you <laughs> when you were a kid, but they didn't. I spent the last couple decades studying these great um, older cultures and the rituals and the ceremonies and the medicines that they've always used in order to stay balanced in situations which uh, were very different but just as you know laden with fear and anxiety and and stress as today uh, they had different stresses they were just as survival based you know with what was going on hey Deb but uh, they developed these wonderful wonderful cultural medicines so today's topic is on feeling powerless. Now, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about dependency. When I used to work at George Williams College, <laughs> actually, I was thinking about this, Deb. When I used to work at George Williams College, I did outdoor environmental education, and we had this big web made of rope. Um, hey, Kathy, behind uh, the administration building where I was out of. And we did an activity, it was about interdependency, and we'd have everybody along the edges, and one person would uh, stand in the middle, and it looked like a giant spider web, and somebody would pluck one of the strings, and we'd pay attention to where we could feel all of the vibrations. Hey, Haley, it was a great lesson on interdependency, on how whatever you do affects everybody else. And one of the gifts of interdependency or being powerless even, even if it's not interdependency, even if it's just one-sided and we feel powerless, is that it shapes us into a person who is compassionate and can bring tenderness and can actually heal relationships. When we're de we are dependent upon someone or something, it's that we're forced to try harder. Oh, <laughs> everybody disappeared. Yes, the spider web. Hang on just a second. I'm not sure where everybody went. Oh, we're backwards. All right. Uh... <laughs> All right, I'm going to switch it around and see if we can get me. Hopefully, I'm in screen and, uh, and doing okay. So, uh, interdependency is where we are forced in some way to treat the people around us better because we need them. Some of the best conservationists in the world are people who use nature. They're ranchers, they're farmers, they're hunters. They're all of those uh, wonderful things. And when we depend upon someone, whether it's a relationship or a job or our environment, we become greater than our ego would normally let us. When we've got all of this power, when we've got all of this empowerment, um, what can happen is we spend our time thinking about ourselves. What do we need? What can we get out of the situation? What's going on? We end up not as sensitive and not as aware of the people around us and uh, the situations around us. We actually become less sensitive the more um, empowered we become or the more powerful we become. You know, as they say, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. And that's very true because when you don't have any checks, when you don't have any reason to, um, to be good to people, what tends to happen, if there's no balance, what tends to happen is we become very narcissistic. We become very self-absorbed and we don't even know it. We think we're being kind, but we've lost the sensitivity. You know, I felt powerless most of my life. And when you have judgmentalism against it, when you feel powerless and you, uh, you're upset about it, it means that you're going to be in this constant conflict. 
But when you feel powerless and you accept it and you allow it, what it does is it brings up a tenderness. You start to treat people and situations much better than you normally would. And it's that extra mile of love, of care, of concern that really warms people's hearts, that takes all of that rocky soil and all of those problems and um, really starts to break it up and starts to allow people to become more human. You know, uh, Buddhist monks very purposely will own nothing and will allow themselves to be dependent on um, dependent on those around them to, to give them everything that they need. So it's a, it's a purposeful dependency because they want to be grateful. They want to be tender. They want to be softer. You know, even though I'm not a big 12-step program, I've had a lot of experience with 12-step programs. And lesson number one is about surrendering, uh, about being powerless. Now, from a women's point of view, we've been powerless most of our lives, and we don't need to be encouraged to be more powerless. That's kind of, you know, ridiculous from my point of view. But because we're already powerless, we have the ability to know how to create community and society and know how to get along because we've always been in a position of being smaller or weaker or not as authoritative and we've had to learn how the world really works we haven't been able to allow our ego to take control to allow the fight or flight to dominate our lives we haven't been allowed to you know we've been in positions where we've had to become um, bigger than maybe we wanted to be. You know, most of my life I was worried that I'd end up homeless on a street corner, some bag lady somewhere. I really did. Until I realized that because of all of the uh, challenges and how I've been shaped by the difficulties in my life, because I realized that, um, what happened was I knew that I would never be alone. I knew that no matter what happened to me, I would be okay because I recognized that if something happened to me, I had the skills and I had the ability to make the best of it. If I lost everything, I'd be able to create more relationships. You know, a lot of people can't say that. When people have had power all of their lives, it means they've got no skills, they've got no tools. And if they lost everything, which is what life does, Life takes everything away from you. When you lose everything and you don't have the skills to create something new or to be kind or have relationships, you know, you're going to really suffer. I'm never going to have to suffer as much as I did when I was younger because I have been shaped to someone who knows how to get along, who knows how to make the best of things and knows how to love life no matter the situation. I know how to navigate it. It's the people who've always had power, always been in control, that I have the most tenderness towards because they live in a sense of fear that they, they aren't even aware of, that if they do lose everything, and they probably will at some point in time, that they won't know what to do. They are much more dependent than I am. So even though on the outside you may seem powerless, and you, you may be powerless over your situations or powerless over how you feel, what you do have power over is the ability to get along, the ability to pick yourself back up. And if you felt powerless most of your life, congratulations, because it means that you are going to be one of the most amazing people out there. You know, codependent people can always find a job. <laughs> it's finding that balance that we need. So when you take the judgmentalism away from your powerlessness, you can actually use it as the deep, deep power that it is. So I hope you like this. I hope the video turned out okay since it got messed up halfway through. And um, if you love this, comment, share, like it, all of that neat jazz because that's what keeps me motivated. So I hope you have a great rest of your day, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Oh, finish.